Hey guys, it's your buddy Thor and little dude man. And uh, we are doing a little audio this time. Um, not in the car. I am still getting some work done around the house. I, I just have so much to do. Uh, it's really hard for me to sit down and then to edit together some of these videos i'm still working on the other one with uh my friend nurse charmaine mika it's her nickname and that one is super powerful and uh you know and i'm just kind of coming to you now because you know a lot of people have lost a lot with this scamdemic um i have friends whose parent has taken their life because their business, you know, crashed and burned after 30 years. And he couldn't handle the loss. He couldn't handle the shame of suddenly not being able to call himself, I guess you'd say, you know, the breadwinner, the the big kahuna and uh, again sorry for the background noise of I've, I've got to keep moving while I'm talking but there's just there's a lot on my mind because I had something really huge happen today that was just feels awful and uh, I'm gonna tell you about it in just a minute it's a great loss it's certainly not anything like a loss of a loved one at all, or even the loss of a 30 year business. But, you know, the key is, my main thing is, you know, the reason I feel this way is ego, ego and, you know, I guess money, but it still goes back to ego, you know, because I have enough right now you know, I, I've got rent paid. My bills are paid. I mean, I still got debt, but, but you know, my, for now, everything is, you know, I'm okay. I'm going to have food. I've got shelter. It just started raining here in California. God bless. But the most important part is I'm taken care of. I have everything that I need. And so I can't say that it's the money and that, you know, I lost this money that could be $30,000, $100,000, you don't know. So I guess telling you that I should just tell you, today I lost a huge national network commercial. I booked a commercial, I'm an actor, 20 years, 22 years, something like that. And I refused to let them stick a swab up my nose or in my mouth for no reason because I'm perfectly healthy. I'm a healthy, healthy man. I eat right. I exercise every day. I take good care of myself. My immune system's kicking. I help others with their health. And yet these criminals, these corporate bastards that the only reason they have these laws is to uh, dehuman people to dehuman people that's it they just want to take your humanity away and I got so many people that are like why didn't you just take the test okay I filed a religious exemption okay this was uh, a Geico commercial right big national network Geico commercial and they asked me to stick a swab in my nose or mouth. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. Because even the CDC says, uh, only test those that have symptoms. I didn't have any symptoms. Why on earth would they want to stick something in my nose or my mouth? And I only say mouth because... Uh, you know, the previous ones that I had taken, I did mouth. And I know a lot of people go, well, you took them before. Why not take them now? And I try to explain to people this feeling 
of not wanting to take it. And I think this is the best one that I've heard. I came up with it, but I haven't heard one better how to explain, especially in the acting world, how to explain to someone why you don't want to take it. And, and also if you've already taken a few tests like I have, you know, I've taken probably, you know, half a dozen or more. So, you know, I got, I got producers and directors asking me, why, why, why start now? Why, or why stop now, I guess I should say. You're already doing it, why would you stop now? And I tell them, because I never felt comfortable in the first place. You know, I just did it for the paycheck. I, I didn't wanna make waves, you know, in my industry. I, you know, I have, you know, I have a couple, well, more than a couple A-list friends. And I have one guy who's an A-list director and comedian. And he told me, Thor, don't get yourself put in a corner. You know, that was, and he, he, he believes the same way I believe. But the only difference is, is I'm willing to stand on the principles and say, no, this is wrong. You know, and I submitted to a few tests in the beginning just because, you know, I didn't. Um, I was going to say I didn't really know, but I guess deep down inside, I kind of knew that this really was going to be the new normal. You know, they told us how many times I got to tell you before you go. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it was uh, I don't know. I just I thought I'd get along for a while and, and you know, and I did it. And it felt bad, right? It felt bad. I felt like, oh, I just felt so dirty getting out of there, right? But I, I mean, yes, I could, I could still function. Yeah, I could still function in life. But the truth was, I felt really, really morally, ethic, ethically bad about it. And so I finally said no. I said no. I did it on a smaller production. It worked out. The people respected the uh, exemption, but then it did it on this giant one. And they said they'd get back to me and they never got back to me. And when I showed up on set, <laughs> they're like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, what do you mean? What am I doing here? And they're like, uh, we got to make a call. And they're like, yeah, you got to go. So, you know, I was, I was just crushed. I'm still crushed. I'm just so upset that you either take their medical treatment, do what they tell you to do medically, or you lose your dream job. Acting for me is my dream job. It doesn't matter if it's a commercial, a film, or whatever it is. I jump out of the bed in the morning when I have an acting job, you know? There is nothing more I absolutely love in the world than being on set with a bunch of other creative people, especially making a comedy. And all the Geico commercials are comedy. You know, it's, it's absolutely everything I want to be doing. And yet it's taken away from me because the ruling class of the system have got a stranglehold on medical and... Uh, the medical system and also media. And all you need to control the masses is to control Hollywood and all the other media outlets. And then have um, put in place enough um, word I'm looking for controls within the medical system so that doctors don't dare don't dare step out of line that's why they make them go to school for eight years if you if you if they if they do an eight-year venture then who on earth is going to go against all that time you've invested into that you know I've been an actor, it's coming up, it'll be 22 years. And, you know, it, it breaks my heart. Like, I, it's so 
upsetting. You know, on so many different ways. Like I said, not to mention, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And other opportunities, other people see you doing this and that, you know. It, it's hard. I feel really, really bad about it. And, and I will say, you know, I have been, you know, kind of making phone calls, talking to different people. Um, it's important to talk about it and not just hold it inside, which is another great outlet for me to share my experience with you so that, you know, you all know that you're not alone when you're going through this stuff, because I know a lot of people have jobs right now where they're afraid to lose their job because then they're like, well, what am I going to do for money now? Right. And for me, I've worked these 22 years to book this job to make money, a, a decent amount of money so that I'm not stressed about money. You know, so I put many, many years into getting to this point where I'm good enough at an audition. I can bend to what the director needs so that they hire me for the job. All those years into getting selected for this job. I don't know if many people can can fathom waiting years to get selected for certain jobs, you know. Other people, they get into the mix and then, you know, sometimes it's boom, boom, boom. They'll hit a lot of different jobs. But for me, I've just never been in the in crowd. I don't go out and party with people. I don't do that type of networking. And um, so, you know, it's just taken me a little bit longer to sort of get into the mix of things. But I'm still quietly doing small jobs and you know, and then I landed on this one. So, all that being said is it's a lot of time invested into this and it's very disappointing, but all those people, I mean, imagine how much courage it took for me to go against, you know, cause I could technically be blackballed, you know? That casting director puts a bulletin out to the other casting director, says, don't hire this guy. He's, he's difficult because that's what they call people that assert their rights difficult. So if they say he's difficult, then it could mean trouble for the future. But I have to realize that I have lots of talents. Like what got me there, right? Just like a lot of people out there have great talents they're not using. There's singers, musicians, actors that are stuck in these certain jobs that they're willing to sell their souls to be in these jobs because they're afraid to get out there and just really trust God and pound the fucking pavement. Because that's, that's what I've been doing. So I think to myself, why am I so upset about this job? Oh, well, who knows, like $30,000. That's pretty upsetting, right? But why would I want that? Oh, well, it would set me up comfortably for, you know, okay, well, what am I, what am I lacking? I start thinking about it and I go, nothing, nothing, just time, you know? Um, and it does buy me some time as far as not having to do as many other little jobs to be able to focus on the big one I'm working on now because I do have another project going on and it's very important. And it's, that's really kind of the big million dollar idea. So everybody has these ideas. The important part is to get off of our asses and to really start trying all of our different ideas. If you really want to be free, you have to free yourself and it's going to hurt and it's going to maybe make you cry. It's going to feel lonely, super lonely because so many people are cowards and they'll go along with this stuff and then they'll tell you, Hey, I would have done that. I would have took the test. Hey man, you can't fight the world. 
You know, I'm not fighting the world. I'm saying for me, I don't want to do that. And they say, okay, well then you can't work for us. You know what? Okay. Then I can't work for you. You know, I tried applying my, not my, but the United States citizen statutes and codes in this scenario. But you know what? They're all fictitious anyway. They're, it's not God's law. It's not natural law. It is a commercial um, equity law. And those judges are merely administrators that can, uh, they can judge arbitrarily. They can pick and choose whatever they want to do. It's not real law. Common law, God's law is. And unfortunately, if I want to be righteous, I have to live outside of the citizenship of the United States as an American national. I have to live outside of the commercial corporate world. Because if you want to play, you have to pay. So I can work for a company and then I owe my soul to that company. I have to do what they tell me or they, or they take away my bread. Or I could start now trying to be independent and work hard, turn off the Netflix, and start putting in time every night, working hard on being free, taking that idea I have and start working on it, watching YouTube to try to learn how to be more entrepreneurial, talking, making time to talk to other entrepreneurial experts, you know, people who are doing it already. Say, hey man, can I buy you lunch? and talk to them and see what you can do. How can I get started a little at a time? Maybe it's just making business cards, you know? Something simple, take little steps at a time to free yourself because this is just the beginning. This is gonna get way worse. Eventually everybody's gonna be plugged in to this particular system if you are a quote unquote, U.S. citizen. And if you're interested in, and don't understand what I'm saying when I say that, that there's two different political statuses, hit me up in the comments. Okay. If you're here and you do understand, then the idea is to start freeing yourself from the matrix. Because if you stay in it, you know, I, I tried to take a job in there. You know, I tried to assert my free man rights as I was trying to take work from a corporation. Like, I mean, no, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I filed a lawful exemption that any court would, should uphold. But these corporations know they're under the protection of the kangaroo courts. They know that if they get drug in a court, they're gonna they're gonna be exonerated because they've been told, just, just do what you're told, man. Things are gonna be fine. No one's gonna be able to sue you, trust me. Because you're going into their court system. You're not in God's law, natural law, common law, court system. Because as God's law, natural law, common law, you need to stay on the path of the righteous, which is very narrow, only one person at a time can go through there. Don't look for a mass exodus. Don't look for a mass awakening. Um, trying to remember, there's a group I enjoy calls with sometimes. And, uh, you know, this guy Roger, he always, uh, what does he say? Um, critical mass. Until we hit critical mass, don't ever look for critical mass. It will never happen. It's not, this, this reality is not designed for critical mass of people to wake up and go, hey, wait a minute, I'm getting fucked in the ass. No, this, this reality is not designed that way. The re reality is designed to function just the way it is. There's gonna be really, really, really rotten times. There's gonna be really, really good times. And it looks like at least once in every generation's life, there's gonna be some really crappy times, you know, maybe a generation or two gets lucky, you know, maybe some families get lucky, but 
you know, these things are hard. Like, again, these are tough times, but is this really tough compared to, you know, the Depression era? No. Are we going to get there? Most likely. Like, if you look at all the other tough times that have, you know, snuck up on civilizations, where the Mayans go, where the Aztecs go, where the Egyptians go, where'd all these great civilizations go? Well, tough times came. It was manufactured tough times. And where did the people go? I don't know. You know, I feel like, you know, the majority of the people anyway. Um, I, th I think the ones that survived, and it makes all the sense in the world, because your great cities are the ones that are dead, the great cities, right? But if you go down to visit the great Aztec temple, what are you going to find? You're going to find that ruins, right? And who gives you the tour of the ruins? Some of them Aztec Indians. That's who. Those people still live somewhat in the area. The city's gone because those people got out of the city. And then they show you, oh, this is back when. Don't believe any of the history in the government history books. It's all been slanted to make you believe a certain way. It's not there to be honest. It's not there to teach you. It's there to misguide you, propagandize you. That's what it's there for. It's there to make you believe what they want you to believe and not know the truth about what they did to that other civilization. What they did to the great country of Germany that was the most industrious. You know, they were like the 1980s America over in Germany before everything that happened to Germany happened just the way it's happening now to America. I mean, identical. If they really, really showed you how they started manipulating Germany to turn them into what they were, you would be like, holy shit, that's exactly what's going on here. You know, they're even using this whole medical uh, military. They did that in Germany as well. If you recall, you know, they were calling people who were not Nazis dirty, unclean. They were calling uh, mentally handicapped people uh, dangerous, sick contagious the deaf and the blind were a burden on society will be better without them and what are they doing now with perfectly healthy people like me who just want to act and make people laugh and smile they're they're acu basically accusing me of being diseased in some fashion and so i need to go to a specialized clinic i couldn't even get an at-home test if i wanted they want me to go to the, their exclusive special clinic. There's only two in Los Angeles. I had to drive an hour to get there. And I did drive there because I wanted to work so bad. I wanted to work so bad. And I, I called my friend on my way there and I'm like, I feel this is wrong. I feel like, you know, at what point do I put a stop to this? What point do I put a stop to this? And it was like, you know what? My, my jabba dabba do exemption works. I'm going to apply it with this test. I don't want them sticking anything in me. I don't want anything in the mouth, anything in the nose. So I made the choice to just be courageous and say, you know what? God's going to provide. I'm just gonna have to stay focused and keep working, you know, keep, keep plugging away. Not let it get me down, not let it slow me down, just keep moving. Because that's what this world is. This is a very short life. Everybody acts like this life is the most important thing, that they've got to build this, build that, hold on to this, hoard that, pass it down to their next generation as though there's not going to be enough for that generation. People have this warped sense of what it means to actually be part of this world. 
you know? What good is it holding on to a bunch of stuff? You know, I've had all this stuff in my house, in my closets and stuff like that. I gave away like a $500 air conditioner unit because I got one. I gave it away. My friend needed an air conditioner. I said, hey, I got one, here you go. I didn't ask for any money. I just had it. You know, if I got extra food, I'll give it to you. I don't need your money. You know, we're supposed to do for each other. And I have found as I've applied that practice in my life, it has truly come back big time. I have people that are just there when I have some sort of a crisis, especially if it's financial. People just show up and throw me a lifeline, write me a check and say, don't worry about this shit. You just worry about getting healthy and all that. And I'm, yeah, I'm referring more to dude man situations. And I'm so thankful for those people in my life. I mean, it really made such a huge difference to not have to stress about where am I going to get, you know, $10,000. Just like I have to be accepting that I'm not going to get any calls from my agent, most likely. They may actually let me go. Because how are they going to send me on anything if I won't test? I'm going to accept the fact that this job's gone. I'm not going to get the job. They are, you know, I'm on my own now as far as acting goes. I'm going to have to accept the fact that, you know, I may have just thrown away. Who knows? 10 grand, 30 grand, 100 grand. Depends how good the commercial does. Who knows? Like, <laughs> that's a lot of money, you know, for someone who has debt. <laughs> I'm insulted. But again, I have a beautiful place to stay in here. It's, you know, small but cozy and I got a pool right out front. Like, I mean, it's, it's, everything's great. I can't complain about anything. And I have this talent to do singing telegrams that believe it or not is still a thing. And I get hired by people all the time. They don't want me, they don't need me to take a test. They don't need me to get a jab at Ebidu. They don't need a mask, nothing. I mean, I, there are a couple places that are a little weird, but the idea is if you're afraid, please feel free to do whatever you want to do. And that's usually what they do. So, you know, sometimes I might be out on a front lawn. Um, but the whole point is I have this skill, you know, and it's not as glamorous as doing a TV commercial, you know, and it doesn't pay nearly as good in a day. Like I would do one day for 30000 or 100,000, whatever it ends up being. Or sometimes, you know, I've had commercials not even make it to air. <laughs> then you get paid for the day. You get your 800 bucks, you go home. But still, that's 800 bucks for a day. Um, with any overtime, you might be 1,200. Our biggest check was 3,000 for one day. So, But the idea is God's going to provide. He's going to give me what I need. You know, I don't have, or I should say, I don't, I'm not lacking, you know, big money and big money items because I, I lack talent or the ability to use my talent. I lack it just because my life trajectory the way it is for whatever reason God's plan is just for me not to be there yet I don't know what the reason is I don't know if it's I have not I don't know I could speculate all I want but the point is I'm, I am where I am for whatever reason there's a power greater than me that is in charge of everything. 
he convicted me not to do that test. And as scared as I might be, because I lost a lot of money and doing something I love to do and being on TV and people getting to enjoy my work. I love watching people watch what I do and laugh. I mean, even in just day-to-day -day conversations, I'm always cracking jokes. You know, there's a couple haters out there that are like, this guy can't ever be serious. Well, he should come check me out on this channel. I'm serious on this channel. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, most of the time, because we're talking about serious stuff. But who knows, you know, the, the vibe of this channel might change too. I, I want to start doing more interviews and I have a tendency to kind of open up and joke around a little bit more when I'm doing interviews. So we'll see how this develops. But I just wanted to come on here today and do kind of podcast style while I was um, doing some arranging. Um, I'm actually hanging some guitars right now, but I'm picking everything up off the floor. I have a very open plan. I'll show you guys the place one of these days. I have a very open floor plan for Dude Man because he can't see. So, so, you know, as I move things, I'm putting things up, building shelves, all that type of stuff. And I have a whole wall dedicated to doing castings, my auditions. I'm not sure that wall will get used a whole lot in the future, but we will do the very best we can. But I am truly blessed and appreciative for every subscriber I have on here. Everybody who sends me emails and messengers and calls me. Um, it's funny when people call me like, I'm sorry, I know you're busy. I'm like, hey, we're, we're all busy, you know. Again, part of my healing in this life and part of my maintaining a healthy uh, healthy attitude in this life is taking calls all the time. I didn't feel like talking at all today. I mean, I was so, oh my gosh. And then my friend John from Connecticut called and I'm like, oh, you know, I did not want to take the call just because I just wanted, I don't know, I just want to be alone and just grieve for a minute, you know? But I just went, okay, do I really need to stop and grieve right now? or be of service to this other guy. So I took the call. He was nice. He's like, yeah, I can tell you're a little down. I can call you back. I'm like, no, you know what? That's okay. This is what we're supposed to do. And by talking to him, it gives me a little bit of time off of thinking about poor me. Because I can really really milk poor me poor 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 me but i just want to encourage everybody else to do what their intuition uh, spirit whatever you call it everybody's got a different name for it if you're christian the holy spirit um listen to what that voice is telling you to do Do what that voice is telling you to do. If more people would have the courage to stand up against these dumb shits, then things would have to change. You know? And, and the other part would be simply that you realize you're, you know, even if they don't change, then you have taken your stand and now you can seek out to be part of another community with other people that are like you. Because that's what I'm doing now. It's like, all right, what am I doing now? I'm not working for the most part in Hollywood, it looks like. So, at least not right now. I don't know. We'll see. But that may be over. I got to be realistic about it. You know, that, that part might be over as far as directly working with their monster corporations, which means I got to put out my own content. 
okay, I can do that. You know, it's very entrepreneurial, but I can totally do that. I just need to really put my, you know, axe to the grind. And luckily I got challenged tonight to write something, a, a real general questions about what it is I'm gonna do on my next project. And, uh, and I'm gonna make it happen. So, in the meantime, I keep grinding. You know, I have other skills. I'm gonna use those other skills, but I'm not going to sacrifice my soul anymore. I'm not doing any more of those stupid tests. You know, I just, I've had it. I felt horrible doing them. I got videos of me doing them. I actually had one taken down where I was talking about amending your contracts and stuff. So anyway, go back, check out my other videos. Uh, make sure you put a thumbs up on this. I, you know, so many people will watch it. Uh, I'll have a hundred people watching, you know, 10 thumbs up. So just take the extra minute, give it a thumbs up, share it with someone. Cause that tells the algorithm you like listening to me share my experience. And, uh, and for, for God's sakes, everybody put your thinking caps on. Okay. It's, it's getting interesting out there and I love you all. And I'll talk to you guys very soon.